Welcome to another video by Jitterbit. This, in this demonstration, we will talk about how you can easily connect and integrate Epicor and Salesforce together. Uh, the way we're going to start is we're going to start with syncing customers and parts from Epicor's into accounts and products objects within Salesforce. So, and we're going to use our citizen integrator where a recipe has been created to make sure those two objects are always in sync. And we're going to go on through, through the process of real-time business process automation, in which case we're going to go ahead and create an opportunity for an account that we just migrated over with some products and have the ability to actually create a quote automatically in real time with Epicor. And obviously we will send information back and forth from Epicor to Opportunity Object in Salesforce as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We will first start our journey as a Salesforce user. Um, I have my accounts and if I go and navigate to look at my accounts you can see I have only six accounts and if I go to products uh, looking at all the products notice that way I have actually no account, no products either so let's go ahead and actually look at the integration so this is where a user a non-technical user can actually deploy the synchronization between Epicor and Salesforce there's a recipe that's available to me and basically this walks me through all the everything that's needed to integrate and make sure the data is in sync so I, I'm answering some very very basic questions in terms of where I want my recipe to deploy what my credentials are do, could do a quick test and also um, my Epicor information so let's do a quick test on that your my username and password and the company I do have access and proper access and I can go ahead and click next and we can do uh, customers customer synchronization as well as product synchronization. I could run these operations right now, but I'm going to deploy this first and let the recipe do it for me. So finish and save, and off we go. All right, so let's go to our account. And you can see now, instead of the six accounts, now I have a total of 47. So 41 accounts moved over from, uh, from uh, Epicor into Salesforce. Now look at also, let's look at our product. Notice that 21 products were added. So now both Epicor and Salesforce have the same set of accounts and have the same products available. So let's go to one of the accounts. Uh, let's pick, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and pick Addison. And we're going to actually create a new opportunity. Uh, let's say this is our biggest deal today and let's pick the close date today and we're gonna put the stage at qualification because we want to add some products of it that we just migrated over so as you can see I have created an opportunity within Salesforce and I'm gonna go ahead and add a product to this quote so let's pick uh, iPad 64 for example select and let's pick a quantity of a thousand of those Notice that my amount within Salesforce changes to almost $600,000. So at this point, I go through my sales process. Uh, at some point, I need to generate a quote. So I'm going to go ahead and say propose price quote and save. Now behind the scene, uh, G uh, Salesforce is sending a request to Jitterbit Harmony APIs. And in turn, Jitterbit calls APIs for Epicor to actually generate a quote uh, at, on the Epicor side based on the information on this opportunity, including the account name, uh, the amounts, and the products that are involved. In this case, it's an iPad 64 uh, gigabyte. So the other part is that once that quote is actually generated on Epicor, we want to get that quote number back into Salesforce just so we can link the quote from Epicor to the opportunity in Salesforce. So if I go ahead and refresh my screen, I should get a order number here, which in this case is 1108. So what we want to do, go to Epicor. Uh, the one that we're looking at is education. I'm just going to navigate to the appropriate area, which is quote management. 
and we're going to look at quote 1108 and we should get the same information that we had added so Addison the shipping address uh, there if we look at the summary we also see iPad 64 a thousand of them at 599 uh, per item for a total of five hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars uh, the other thing we may, we may want to do from as an Epicor user is to make some changes to this specific quote. So let's go ahead and actually say uh, our best case is actually 50% and uh, worst case we're going to get uh, 10% and the confidence level that we have let's say it's 75. So before I save this quote on the Epicor side, I want to go back to our Salesforce instance. The way I have set this up is we are we have three custom fields, best case scenario, worst case scenario, and confidence level on the Salesforce. So if you recall, when I created this, I didn't set the value of these three fields. What we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and uh, save this specific quote with these modified values in Epicor. Now if we go back to Salesforce and refresh our page, now you see that the data was automatically in real time pushed over to Salesforce. So this shows how we can create an opportunity based on synced information between Epicor and Salesforce in Salesforce and then that way those two applications are always in sync and based on events that take place such as a requirement for a quote to be generated to do that automatically real time. Now let's take a look at how this was actually put together. This is Jitterbit Design Studio. This allows you to design all your integration projects um, I wanted to cover a couple of uh, scenarios where we did the synchronization between Epicor and Salesforce. The first one, if you recall, was the customer synchronization. So we had, uh, using our REST connector, we were able to easily connect to Epicor and call the appropriate APIs to uh, get the customer information. We are able to do the transformation, drag and drop, uh, with also 250 built-in functions to allow you to do further massaging of the data before putting it into the target system. And then once you have the customers from Epicor, you want to be able to upsert them into Salesforce. This allows you to have modification made on Epicor and have those uh, modifications or updates be reflected on Salesforce and vice versa. We did the same thing with parts. Uh, we were, Again, we get authenticated with um, Epicor, called the appropriate REST APIs. Uh, did our transformation and once we had the product we entered all the product in Salesforce using our Salesforce connector as you can see here and then we also added those products that we just added uh, and added them to the appropriate price book so this is how you can see we can go from Epicor to Salesforce very easily very very few operations and then not only that you can expose all these um, potential uh, integration scenarios and bundle them as a recipe and deploy it into Jitterbit Citizen Integrator so non-technical people can actually kick these, uh, these processes off on their own. We hope that you enjoyed this video um, and uh, we'll see you next time.